All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the January 26, 2016 meeting of the Fayetteville Planning Commission. If you would, take this opportunity to silence your cell phones. Mr. Garner, would you please call the roll? Noble? Here. Selby? Here. Autry? Here. Hoskins? Here. Sisser? Here. Onchol? Here. Cook? Winston? Here. Bunch? Okay. We have four items on tonight's consent agenda. Item number one is the approval of the minutes from the January 12, 2015 meeting. Item number two, vacation 14-4934, excuse, excuse me, 4935, submitted by Jorgensen and Associates for property located at the northern end of Raven Lane. Property zoned RSF residential single family four units per acre and contains approximately 0.09 acres. The request is to vacate a portion of an existing utility easement. Item number three, vacation 14-4936, also submitted by Jorgensen and Associates for property located at 2269 North Henbest Drive. The property is zoned C2 Thoroughfare Commercial and contains approximately 4.78 acres. The request is to vacate a portion of an existing utility easement. And finally, item number four, vacation 14-4933, submitted by Jorgensen & Associates for property located at, the, at Persimmon, and Mount, Persimmon and Mountain Ranch Boulevard. The property is zoned RPZD Residential Plan Zoning District Park Hill at Mountain Ranch and contains approximately 2.72 acres. The request is to vacate a portion of an existing utility easement. Commissioners, is there a motion to approve? Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Cook and a second by Commissioner Chesser. Chesser, okay. Mr. Garner. Noble? Yes. Shelby? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Chesser? Yes. Honcho? Yes. Cook? Yes. Winston? Yes. Motion carries. We have no items on old business, so beginning with new business. Item number five, large scale development 14-4940, submitted by Blue and Associates for property located at 3600 Player Lane. The property is zoned RPZD, Residential Plan Zoning District, and contains approximately 19.83 acres. The request is for the construction of 456 apartment, of a 456 unit apartment complex consisting of 24 structures and associated parking. Mr. Garner. If this Garner. property is located north and east of Weddington Rupal Road, I have the property pulled up here on Google Earth. You're probably familiar with it. <coughs> uh, we did have an uh, item on your planning commission agenda last meeting discussing the uh, Fayetteville Row Homes, which was a portion of the build out of the links at Fayetteville. This is phase two for the links at Fayetteville. It's a uh, build out of a majority of the remainder of the apartment units, or actually all of the uh, well, majority of the apartment units, 456 units, and uh, parking lots associated with that, along with um, public streets um, through the property. Um, this was discussed at the subdivision committee meeting last week. Um, there were no major issues. Um, would like to point out some details of the project. Um, public streets will be built um, from. Rupal Road all the way through the site, connecting into the existing neighborhood here into uh, the east. And this is a part of the original PZD requirement and also part of the uh, acceptance of the parkland for the regional park, the, the Rice Davis Dog Park. Um, and as part of that, they will be providing on-street parking spaces with this street at this point to, for better public access into the park. You'll see in your, your packet a variance of the master street plan cross-section. Uh, we're recommending that the sidewalk be provided only on one side of this street. This will be adjacent to green space and golf course, so we'll no, it never be developed, but we do feel like the, you know, the public sidewalk connection will be provided from this neighborhood all the way through here to the park and continuing all the way through into the Lynx at Fayetteville project. With the Lynx at Fayetteville phase one, the planning commission required payment of assessment for two traffic signals. We discussed that at your last Planning Commission meeting. Uh, one at this entrance here, uh, Golf Club Drive on Rupal, and also at the main entrance on Weddington. I won't go into too much detail about that, but we are recommending that an assessment continue to be paid towards those intersection improvements. 
and with this project at this point would be built out 87%. We're recommending that the second intersection be improved to 87% of the cost of a signal on Rupal Road. And so we have that assessment amount there listed in the calculation in the staff report in condition number one. I think that's, those are the main issues I wanted to bring up to the Commission. Um, have not had any uh, public concerns or comments with this, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Garner. Is the applicant present, please? If you will, sir, give us your name and whatever you may want to add. My name is Buckley Blue. I'm with Blue and Associates. We're the engineers for this project. We understand the conditions of approval that the city's requested, and we're in agreement with those. I can, I can answer any questions you guys may have. Good. Thank you, sir. Is there any member of the audience who'd like to speak to this item? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioners. Total silence. Mr. What's Chair, I did have something I forgot. Oh. <laughs> hey, let's live it uh, back up again. I passed out a packet of comments um, from the Urban Forester. These are tree preservation comments. They're um, fairly standard. They just did not get into your packet. Um, and Mr. Easton is here to explain the comments. I believe there are some additional uh, tree preservation numbers that need to be worked out before construction, especially of the off-site road extension uh, through here. So I will. Has this been provided to the engineer? We have not. These are, I'll pass these over to Buckley. Let's see if Buckley still agrees. Uh, thank you. The, the way this project was uh, submitted, it came through as the Lynx development initially did not include that road extension to the east. Uh, so the site information that was originally <coughs> developed, the tree canopy and all of the calculations were only for the Lynx property. They did not include this road extension to the east. Uh, we still don't have the canopy information on that road extension and we also show some grading that's occurring in a tree preservation area. Uh, there's not any great concerns that I have about that particular road extension. I just don't have the information I need at this time to, to put a mitigation assessment on it. So the approval from urban forestry does not include mitigation for that road extension. Okay. Thank you, sir. <coughs> now back to the commission. <coughs> Mr. Chair. Mr. Chester. Um, well, I'd love to hear from the applicant in light of this change. I know he hasn't gotten a chance to look at it much. Uh, just to see if this changes anything from the pers from the applicant's perspective. No, sir. We were aware that we were going to have to address that um, when we added the road running back to the east. So we'll more than gladly work with Ken and staff to get their concerns taken care of. Okay. Um, and Andrew, this doesn't change anything for you, I guess, since you're aware of forestry's. Okay. Um, since everyone else is silent, I was waiting, I wasn't able to make agenda, but this seems very straightforward to me. I'm very happy about the on street. I've tried to park back there before to go to the dog park and it's just difficult. Uh, given that, let's see, I'm gonna move that we, this is an approval, straight, straight approval, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Approve LSD 14-4940 with staff recommendations of approval. Second. Okay. Any other comments? We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Chester and a second by Commissioner Autry. Yes. Selby? Yes. Autry? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Chester? Yes. Poncho? Yes. Cook? Yes. Winston? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Moving on to item number six, preliminary plat. 14-4865, submitted by Randy Ritchie for property located at 1898 Mission Boulevard, the property zone RSF residential family, sing, uh, residential single family, four units per acre, contains approximately 8.56 acres. The request is for 19 single family lots. And this item 
Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and take some whatever comment we need to, I suppose. Uh, this item uh, is the applicant that we table this item. Until a after the public comment, to table it. Right, okay. so maybe just open it up to public comment. Okay. Yeah. All right. And this will be Mr. Fulcher. Glad to see you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I hadn't planned to give a staff report. We've been continuing to work with the applicants at the subdivision committee meeting. Okay. Uh, two of our commissioners that were present at that meeting really asked the applicant to go back and look at some of the tree preservation areas, particularly along the west side of the property. There's a lot of grading in that area to get their street end attention on. There was also a drainage just that they were proposing in that area. But they've been working with us. In fact, we met with uh, urban forestry engineering and, and the applicants this morning to look at their grading plans. They are looking at providing some tree preservation areas, uh, dedicating some tree preservation easements along the west property line and removing a lot of grading shrinking down the street section to get it off the west property line as well. So they're continuing to monitor their plans. We expect to have revised plans submitted to our office, I believe, next week uh, for the following Planning Commission meeting uh, two weeks from tonight. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Virgil. Is the applicant present by chance? You will, sir, give us your name and if you want to add anything to staff's comments. Yeah, Clay Morton. Uh, no, just kind of like what Jesse said. After the um, subdivision and the comments some of the neighbors we just want to address some of those concerns so uh, we feel like we're, we're getting closer so okay. thank you sir okay are there any members of the public like to speak to this item okay and before before we start speaking let me remind you that um, we're gonna have this on our agenda again next week and as far as two weeks, two weeks. or excuse me next he's right next meeting and uh, and so we up here know very, very little about the project at this point, so the staff is still working on it. So you may want to save your big bullets for next time. But if you will, uh, step up and give us your name, and if you will, keep it as brief as you possibly can. Uh, yes, sir, I'll make it quick. I'm Benjamin Kovach. I live at 2195 Lisa Lane. That's the uh, three-acre property that is on the east side of this plot of land. You can just barely see the little cut out there at the end of Lisa Lane. That's where our property is. Um, I just wanted to bring up while they're discussing actually in line with the forestry part, um, there are a lot of trees on that eastern side that our fence has actually grown into. So if they basically wiped out the entire uh, section of trees there on the east side, that would end up doing damage to our property as well. It's just something to consider when you're considering trees to keep. Is there anybody else that would like to speak to this item? Seeing that, we'll bring it back to the commission. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chesser. I move that we table PPL 14-4865 until the February 9th, 2015 meeting of the Planning Commission. Okay. Okay. We have a tabled motion by Commissioner Chesser and a second by Commissioner Cook. Mr. Garner. Noble. Yes. Selby. Yes. Autry. Yes. Hoskins. Yes. Chesser. Yes. Honcho? Yes. Cook? Yes. Winston? Yes. <coughs> Motion carries. Okay. Next item is conditional use permit 14-4937 submitted by Blue and Associates for property located at Spring Street between East and College Avenue. The property is zone MSC Main Street Center and contains approximately 0.12 acres. The request is for off-site and shared off-site and shared parking. And before we move forward on that, do you want to hear both of these these next two items together? Uh, yes, sir. I would like to go ahead and and, and work on these together. Okay. Um, All right. I so we're going to read that. They out. are dependent on on each other, and they are really okay. interrelated. So that's fine. And, and uh, Andrew, if you would, uh, would you uh, make sure that we have the, the planning red lines for the CUP? That's kind of my my graphic for um, for the CUP up, and and maybe even that uh, Google image, uh, if you would. Um, Let me go ahead and read item number eight as well, and then we can get started. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, variance item number eight, tandemly with this item number seven, is variance 14-4939, submitted by Blue and Associates for property located at <coughs> Spring Street between East and College Avenue. The property is owned MSC Main Street Center and contains approximately 0.12 acres. The request is for a variance to the 15-foot green space requirement between the parking lot and Spring Street, and a variance of the 5-foot green space requirement between the parking lot and east, the eastern property line. Mr. Thompson, take it away. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
This is uh, property located at uh, 20 East Spring. It is an undeveloped lot at this time in the Main Street Center Zone. Uh, there's an adjacent uh, parking lot uh, to the uh, west and uh, associated with that a, a former residence that's now an office building uh, that uses that parking lot. Uh, the conditional use uh, tonight is part of a, an SIP project that's coming through on another review track that would um, build an office building uh, at 20 East Spring and uh, they would like to share parking with, uh, with the 16 East Spring, the uh, lot on the opposite, or the development on the opposite side of that. Um, they do have a shared parking agreement. Uh, what they would like uh, uh, signed, uh, you have not approved one yet, what they would like uh, and what they're requesting tonight is uh, off-site parking approval from this, uh, this planning commission uh, for a very narrow area. Um, we see that uh, plan. Uh, a, a narrow five-foot strip that runs essentially uh, along that property. It actually, the parking crosses over there, but they're um, then asking for um, for that to be used uh, for this new development. Um, staff um, is um, recommending in favor of this uh, parking agreement and this off-site parking with uh, certain conditions of approval uh, that we'll get into in just a moment. But uh, with this project, the uh, applicant is um, is proposing a couple of things that uh, would require variances and. Uh, that would be uh, number 4939 section of this. They would like to do <coughs> uh, continue to use parking uh, all the way up into the green space, 15-foot uh, green space requirement of this project, and um, and not provide a buffer zone between uh, between projects. Andrew, am I mixing this up? No. Okay. We've worked back and forth on this pretty pretty carefully, so uh, stop me if I do. Um, and, uh, if, we're recommending. If you could point to where he's talking about that. Oh, would be I have good. a, I have a pointer here. He has a I pointer. I can't quite reach it. You can borrow his pointer. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Tag team. Mm -hmm. right. um, what we'd like to do is, uh, is make a recommendation in favor of one of these variances, uh, the five foot uh, side uh, variance for. Buffer there, five foot buffer, and we'd like to uh, recommend denial of the variance for 15 feet, uh, the variance from the 15 feet of green space requirement, um, and uh, recommend as well in favor, in favor of the conditional use, uh, with some conditions, and those conditions would um, <coughs> would include uh, that new sidewalk be installed uh, along the parking lot street frontage that would uh, match the improvements that they're being required to do as part of their SIP. Uh, with 20 East Spring, uh, that would set a five-foot sidewalk at the uh, back of right-of-way, which is uh, which is our common uh, detail there. Uh, and to reduce a, a extra large or oversized uh, driveway curb cut that they have, that's uh, 27 feet plus right now. We'd like to uh, see that. We ask that that would be reduced to 24, which is our typical um, uh, allowed <coughs> curb cut. We would uh, ask that uh, you would meet uh, the, the intent of uh, this landscape and uh, form-based zoning codes. We want you to minimize that parking area, or the applicant to minimize parking area on that parking lot by reducing uh, the existing parking lot size by one parking place and thereby providing and, and regreening that, so providing a little bit of a, a buffer there between the parking and the sidewalk. And, um, <coughs> and to link these two variances together uh, so that um, Although we're recommending denial of a 15-foot green space, uh, we would uh, we would allow through the uh, through, through the CUP condition a, uh, a removal of a, require a removal of some of that parking and replanting, so we get a certain amount of that green space, if not all of it, and that would allow them to uh, entirely park this new development, which uh, is uh, seems like a, entirely appropriate in that area, and uh, to use it uh, the existing for the for the 16 East Spring. So if I've um, can tell I'm going to get some questions from you all. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's uh, let them let them come then. I suppose. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. You want to come back to you then? Yes. Okay. All right. That's fine. 
All right, sir, if you will, I assume you're the applicant. Uh, if you will, give us your name and, and whatever you can tell us about this. George DeCane, Blue & Associates. And uh, as you can tell, this is a very small site. It's about 0.12 acres. It's not very big. So we were not able to fit all the parking that's required, which I believe was about eight or nine spaces for the site on the site itself, which is why the conditional use agreement, we had to actually create a shared parking in between our lot and the lot to the uh, left there. Now. What I would like to do on the variance is instead of the outright denial of the 15 foot, maybe reduce it from a 15 foot green space down to a nine foot. So modify that variance to say a nine foot green space is what's required out there instead of a 15 foot and thereby allow that one parking space if that would be acceptable to everybody. And that way the intent of what Quinn wants is, is gone and then we also have a, would that be does that make any sense? In other words, we, we need that final parking space and that final parking space is in that 15 feet, but it's about six feet into that 15 feet. So, and I believe Quinn wants to leave that parking space there. So I believe if we take it down to nine foot green space in the front, that, that kind of meets the intent of what the planning staff would like to do. Is, is that right or is it? We, we do have the urban forester, Derek Lynn, that reviewed the project is here as, as well for comments. Uh, the recommendation officially is coming from the urban forestry division. Okay. If you will, go ahead and continue, and then we'll get to them in a few moments. Okay. So, I mean, the only thing that we're really doing is we're just asking for a variance uh, on, that, on the green space requirements, the five foot there. Without the five foot, we wouldn't be able to do the parking. And then the, uh, the 15, a reduction to nine foot so that we could have that final parking space in there and a conditional use to allow for the off-site parking on this, uh, right there adjacent to our lot. Okay. Make sense? Good. Is that it? Ma'am. Well, that's quicker than I thought it would be. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. Is there any member of the public like to speak to this item? If you will, sir, come up and give us your name. And um, I'm Grant Barnes. I own 16 East Spring Street, uh, just to the west there. And... Um, you know, I'm here, uh, Andrew and I have worked together on the deal, like whenever I sold them a lot. If, if you saw it now, I don't know if you guys saw the picture now, it's, I mean, there's a hole in the middle, uh, some water holds there. I mean, you know, I just, I look at something, I'm like, what's it look like now, what's it going to look like? And what he wants to do is perfect. I mean, I took the old Carlisle Murphy Law Firm there, which hadn't been touched in 25 years, and, and redid it, and it's awesome. I mean, it's really awesome. And, you know, um, once we got together, I didn't want to touch the lot parking lot until we came up with a plan. There was no point in me going and putting some gravel down or something and just trying to get away with that if he was going to do what he was going to do. So, you know, if you look at what's there now and you look at what it's going to look like, I mean, we need stuff like this so bad. And, you know, it's, um, you can see the hole right there and right now, I mean, it is what it is. It can stay that way and just be that way. Um, it's a blank lot sitting there that just gets cut every once in a while. Um, his building will pretty much match my building, and I mean, when I saw the plans, I was just ecstatic. My, all my employees are pretty ecstatic about what it's going to look like. But, you know, I just, I understand why we have these things. I know we're here to protect the city, but what's going to be there is going to be ten times better looking and functional for what we're trying to do with the city than what we have right now. And I'm kind of waiting to see what comes of this so that we can make these improvements. So that's my, my stake in it. But it's going to be a really nice place. If you guys want to come by, it's pretty awesome. So, anyway, all right. Any questions, I guess? And we, we had agreed on the parking. I was, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't take up, um, you know, I know we, we use four or five there right now. And, you know, I had agreed that with him whenever we made the deal was that we'd share that parking lot. So however we can make it work. And I, I think we're in the perfect fit of businesses. He doesn't have a lot of traffic. Um, I don't have a ton of traffic. So I just don't see it ever being a problem for sure. So, thanks, sir. I'm Andrew Vinson with RPH. Uh, we're the ones that own the building and doing the development here. Uh, I'll just reiterate what Brant said when I first uh, decided to buy the uh, property from him. I asked if it was possible, because I know it's a small lot, if, we'd be, if he'd be willing to share the parking lot and sell the first agreement that we came to. And we've agreed, uh, obviously, to, to have an easement agreement to share the parking lot. And obviously, we are going to co uh, take care of the parking lot any uh, repairs, maintenance, or anything, we'll take care of it uh, from my side as well as his. We've agreed that we're going to do that jointly. Um, like I said, I want to put a small office there. I'm a real estate development company. I don't have a ton of traffic, but obviously with the site and uh, how small it is, 
the, the more parking spots that, that we can have there, the, the better off it is. Um, but we agree we'd like to have green space out in front. We want to make it fit nice and neat with what's already around that area. So uh, everything else I think is going pretty well, but we'd uh, appreciate uh, taking into consideration these variance requests. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Is there anybody else in the public would like to speak to this? So you know, I'll bring it back to the commission. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Chester. I believe Mr. Thompson had some things to add, and I'd really like to hear what they are. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, kind of maybe uh, remove some of the blank stares I hope uh, that I was getting before. Um, I, I think part of the confusion is we're, um, we're not considering this parking lot um, as development. It's an existing parking lot. Um, there is, although they're building a building adjacent to it, uh, they are uh, in no sense required to, uh, to change anything uh, on that existing lot. So um, in that sense, the variance uh, be separate. We're not, even though we are asking, seeking denial of a of a 15 foot green space, that would have no impact on this at this time. There is no, um, there's no development that's proposed there. So, uh, you know, with the uh, conditional use, the parking, uh, offsite parking, we are requesting that they remove some of that as condition. But um, uh, beyond that, we we are um, not seeing any development there and can't. Uh, and ask for any any changes to it. So, and we don't see that there is hardship that would um, require uh, or justify a variance uh, of that 15 foot uh, for for in that sense the variance sense. Okay. So to be clear, Mr. Mr. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can't get my thoughts straight. So to be clear, the the conditional use part of it basically is the shared parking agreement. The off-site parking? Yes. Okay, and the variance portion of this is the reduction of the green space and, and modifications to the parking lot, if any, and that kind of thing? Um, the variance uh, they're seeking is a five foot of a side buffer that mm -hmm. uh, they actually, we feel that they don't need because the, uh, the primary use of the parking lot is serving this other building. There is no buffer required between uh, the parking and, a, and the development that's undergo being you know, happening. It's just not a, not a necessary variance. So, uh, in our sense, we think it's okay to do, um, but the other one we don't see hardship for. However, um, we would like to uh, to allow them to continue to use like, at least a portion of one of those parking places. That seems uh, uh, feasible and proportionate to the to the use that they're asking for, the request to do the conditional use, and uh, would only like them to remove uh, one parking area, one parking slot. They're right up against the sidewalk and the street. That helps. So if this if the commission was to, because um, we're going to vote on these items separately, so if the commission was going to implement, like, parking lot standards or whatever, or make that part of this approval, would we do it in item number seven or item number eight? Uh, item number seven. Okay. The conditional right. use. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Mr. Chair, could we hear Urban Forestry and their comments? Absolutely. Since they did a review on it, I'd be curious what their thoughts are. Absolutely. About. Okay. Uh, Urban Forestry, it was mentioned previous that you've got something you want to say. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Derek Lynn, Urban Forester with the city. <clears throat> um, I think the planners have um, really summed up uh, our staff report approach to this uh, project. Um, understand there's perhaps a bit of confusion about where the line is drawn on there and, and what we're requiring, but <clears throat> we, are, uh, we are recommending the removal of this one parking space. Uh, in addition to um, that action providing the required green space, it also creates a more uh, functional and, and, and safe uh, throat link to the approach of this parking lot. So I think that's another aspect that is important to be mentioned. Um, and then, of course, just the, the overall benefit that this green space buffer provides. Um, from a broader perspective, um, not just a space for um, street trees, but, but also for a, a safer uh, walkable zone there for those uh, pedestrians using the, the sidewalk. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Chair. 
Mr. Chester. So I just want to clarify something that I still felt like was a difference between the applicant and Mr. Thompson's report. 15 to 9 feet on the front. I understand that. So, Andrew, can you point to that red box? That's the removed space, correct? We're recommending that they remove that space and put green space there. Okay, and the applicant agrees with that or disagrees was, with that? I was confused. Um, I didn't understand. I usually thought variances would apply to uh, existing conditions as well and that we were trying and correct an existing condition. But uh, I'm okay with what the staff has said with removing a space on the existing parking lot. is The one marked in red? Yeah. That's okay. But when I understood you to say was that that other space, the next one up, the, the 15 foot line goes through, you want that space to remain? Yes. Mr. Thompson, I believe you were agreeing that that space could remain? Yes. Yes. It seemed like there was some disagreement between the applicant and Mr. Thompson about how that would occur as far as the variances were working, but at, at the beginning I thought we were losing that space that's cut in half. I didn't realize it was this red one. So. Am I sort of on, is everybody on the same page now? You are. I, I believe so. I believe that the variance is no longer required because that is an existing paving, a paved parking lot, so. Yeah, I can maybe clarify that the portion that requires the variance is the new asphalt they're, they're putting into the 15 foot area. So you can see here, here's the 15 foot line. They're pouring asphalt into this 15 foot area. Uh, our recommendation really should have been recommend approval of the nine foot variance, as Mr. Duquesne discussed. We, we agree with them. It's appropriate for them to be able to expand this space here and as long as they remove this area there. Oh, okay. And they're going to turn that area that's currently paved, marked in red there, in the green space. That's yes. correct. Which gets urban forestry what they were talking about, well, gets urban forestry what they were discussing, including a safer pedestrian zone there. Okay, right. So that space that the green line goes through stay remains. And, and becomes expanded so. It's expanded, right. yeah. And the space in red, asphalt's removed and green space is replaced. Mm -hmm. You're fine with that. And you've already, the applicant's already said that they've got plenty of parking, so you don't mind losing that space. No, once okay, so then my question, given what Mr. Garner just said, was, I guess we gotta do the COP, COP first, but when it comes to the variance, Andrew, I heard a recommendation of denial, and then I heard what I think was a change from Andrew. So how does that get crafted? I think you, you simply make a motion to recommend approval of the conditional use permit for off-site parking with the conditions as recommended by staff. That's one. So the conditional use permit would be fine. On the variance, you would recommend in favor of um, both the 15-foot variance and the 5-foot variance with the conditions as recommended by staff as previously included in the conditional use permit. Which would be what we just discussed, essentially. Correct. And you're fine with that. I'm good with and that. you're fine with that. That's all I want to know, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Winston. Uh, would that motion deal with the reducing the drive aisle to 24 feet? It did. It's in the conditions already as written. Okay. Right. I got a few questions. Um, first question is there's some parking on the east side of this building. I assume that the alley adjacent to that parking on the east side of the building is a public alley, not a private alley? Is that correct? Right. Okay. So they've got full access to that then? Yes. Okay. And then um, the, I noticed that if we go back to the site plan, please. I noticed there was uh, some room on the north side of where the pro proposal is going to be, um, and it's got a retaining wall up there. Um, did, uh, I don't, what, what is that area? What is that space up there? Tree preservation. Okay, it's tree preservation? Okay. So as far as move, moving the building north a little bit to, for the parking lot issue, it's probably not a feasible thing. Okay. Um, and then as we discussed at... Um, uh, agenda the other day, uh, the parking lot 
I understand it's, a, it's an off-site lot technically, but um, if anybody else were doing a development like this in town, they'd be required to bring the entire parking lot up to standard. We're going to do that as well. Okay. So you have, well, I don't see what's pictured there as far as tree islands. Oh, well, that, that's part of the SI. Uh, there is one tree island of one that we're going to be uh, keeping in, but we are, we're going to be taking this through the SIP process, the uh, small improvement plan process so it goes to technical plot and will comply with everything that the city requires and at that point okay when we discussed this the other day that particular resolution was not brought up yeah <coughs> I'm going to clarify you know on, the, on this review we will go through the small site improvement plan review through the development committee we have already looked at it because it is an off-site parking lot um, it's an existing parking lot they can use it as is and it's, it's not required by code to be brought up to 100% compliance unless, our, our, unless they decided to rip the whole thing out and put it back in. Our understanding they were simply going to add a little bit of asphalt on this side uh, right here and kind of just overlay and patch in the hole. Yes. If those kinds of maintenance activities are allowed by right, just basic maintenance of a parking lot, you can do that and use the parking lot without having to bring it up to code. So that's why we're recommending these conditions of approval to get the landscaping that we would normally, um, especially because they are building an entirely new office building, um, we feel like it's appropriate to require some of these green space improvements. Okay, so, but what you're saying, because <clears throat> you're on the record, is it is your intent to bring that parking lot completely up to current code that, that anybody would have to do with a new development? Um, what we're planning on doing is just meeting the SIP process and whatever the city requires as part of the SIP process. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure if I can answer that we're meeting it completely up to code um, at this point because uh, honestly I don't remember what uh, what the city would require on that as part of the SIP process. I didn't think we were actually going to talk about the development itself uh, today besides the conditional use and the variance request. Uh, okay, um, which I'm going to probably ask the city attorney to chime in here, here in just a second. But um, <clears throat> the only op opportunity for the parking lot to ever be brought into compliance is with this project, most likely, because uh, it's whatever it's being, it's uh, already got a building on the other side or what have you. And um, I think that uh, anybody else that would build a new structure in town would probably be required to bring, bring their parking lot up to standard. Now, they have the, the fact that that it is a shared parking lot. Um, obviously, they're partners in this project or what have you. Um, and as far as the, uh, as far as bringing it, that's current code. Of course, they're asking for variances and conditional uses, whatever. So I think that that is something that this panel can require. So I'd like to hear what the attorney, city attorney, has to say about that. Well, I think you are correct that if you are asked to grant a conditional use or a variance, then you have the right uh, to require such conditions as would uh, ameliorate any uh, danger or problems that the conditional use or the variance would, would have caused. So, uh, in other words, you can't um, do something that's totally unrelated to the conditional use or to the variance. But you certainly can put in provisions uh, and conditions on your variance or, or conditional use approval that would preserve the reason that you had the, the ver you had the conditions in the first place that your your applicant is asking for the variance from. So it was green space type issues of setback. Uh, those are the same sorts of things that uh, that you can then add if you felt like it was necessary in order for the spirit of the original code section uh, to be complied with and as part of the conditional use to make sure that the use that they're putting to this is something that will uh, not adversely affect neighbors and, and be within the spirit of the ordinance. Uh, like you say, if they owned both pieces of property, if it was one ownership, they owned it, the, both the blank land that they're going to build the building on and the parking lot, uh, if they would have to do more than with split ownership, it's pretty hard to justify why, because they don't own this other property, that they actually have to get a conditional use to use, that they then don't have to bring that property lot up to, that parking lot up to the same standards as if they own both of them. It's kind of like you're getting an, an advantage because you don't own property, 
which seems uh, confusing to me. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, that's the only thing I was, I was listening as well, trying to figure out, is just a reminder that I don't technically own the parking lot. I just have a, an easement agreement to use it. Uh, technically, Mr. Barnes here owns the parking lot, so that was my understanding is how can I go make improvements on his property as a requirement to build my building when I don't technically own that. But I think uh, Mr. Williams explained that pretty well, so I was just going to reiterate that point, obviously. Well, you may have to technically get permission from him to do it. Uh, that's what I'm, obviously I would, but he hasn't seen, obviously, the, uh, the SIP or anything like that. I gave him a, a, an overview of the building of the drawing and everything else, but he hasn't, said it, he hasn't seen any of the technical requirements that we're going to have to go through to, to do that. And obviously we want to wait and see what, uh, what you all had to say here at the, uh, at the council meeting before we took the next step and talked to Mr. Barnes if, that, if everything that you all recommended would be okay with him, obviously. And of course, one thing that you need to keep in mind is, is the potential size of the parking lot and how many parking spaces might be lost and whether or not that would be reasonable for the current property owner uh, mm -hmm. so that the value of the parking lot is not uh, reduced Basically, have we, uh, Quinn, have we done any uh, parking rate, uh, calculations ratios? Yes, sir, we have. Um, if we look on page two of 20 in the conditional use permit report, we have the parking chart. So they have um, um, two extra spaces, a total of 17 required, 19 are proposed. Okay. And is there any reduction for scooters or anything like that on this? I just want to say that's less than one that we would have to be removed uh, with the conditional use that we're asking for. Okay. So we have one extra. Okay. Thank you, sir. So you, even after you remove that one, you still got, still got one to spare, basically. Okay. Thank you. Misters, um, I guess we need to look at the conditional use permit first. And of course, if we're going to require any improvements to an old parking lot. This would be the place to do it. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chester. So I guess, Mr. Thompson, I guess this is a question for you, although I will understand if you don't know the answer right now. Don't cast aspersions of Mr. Thompson. He is well, well prepared. I, I, no, there's no aspersion. It's just <laughs> not you. something Thank that I expect Williams. that he would need to know. <laughs> My, so I'm trying to come up with speed with what our chair just said, which seems to be that this is our chance to require improvements to bring this lot to a spec that it would be brought to if it was a new lot in a new building. I got that pretty much right, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. So my question, and it seems to me as if staff is essentially okay with the lot as it is with the improvements staff is seeking at this time. Uh, i.e. the throat length and narrowing of the throat and adding some, agree, can, some green space. And it uh, seems to be that Mr. Garner's opinion is that really they should be allowed to improve this, to maintain this parking lot in any event in the state that it's currently in. And so staff is somewhat happy to get what we're getting here, I, I feel like is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, uh the proposal that, that we're recommending the applicant to green to is about 95% compliance with all parking lot codes as far as green space. That was going to be my next question. So the, the only thing they're really not doing is, you know, along this north property line, they would have to have a, a landscape buffer of five feet. Um, and then again, we're talking about a variance of a five foot buffer on the east and on the west um, because that's a requirement on the perimeter. And again, given the dimension of this lot and trying to get two rows of parking spaces, we feel like these variances here are, are, are necessary to even get the two rows of parking spaces. So Which are currently existing. They're already exi they're existing. Right, and could be maintained. That's correct. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think they currently, well, I mean, if they exist, they in, exist in a non-conforming kind of way. Right, I mean, that, the, if, you, if you, to part both sides of it right now as is, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's tight, it's not quite wide enough. Which is why they're adding to the parking lot. That's the five foot conditional use. Yeah, yeah I get that, but I mean it's, okay. So but the real question is, 
how far off are, are they from what would have to be in what if pretend it's a blank slate and they put in a new parking lot, how far are off are they, which I think was Commissioner Hoskins' point. If they're at ninety five percent, given what you've said, I'm tempted to just say, Well fine, go ahead and do it. If it's at fifty percent, that's a different thing. So you're saying they're at ninety five percent of what we would require anyway. Correct. I mean, the, they're they're encroaching a little bit into the 15-foot green space. With even with our recommendation, as Mr. Duquesne said, it would be about a nine-foot buffer. Right. We're also recommending. A, I don't know if you picked up on this, but to narrow this driveway would also increase right. the green space. Mm -hmm. It would. Um, you, so you'd get more green space on this side, enough room for a tree on the other side of the driveway. So they're they're getting very close to meeting the code. Okay. That's that's what I was trying to find out. Uh, given that, I'm going to move that we approve CUP 14-4937 with staff recommendations of approval. Second. Okay. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Chester and a second by Commissioner Selby. Mr. Honor. Noble? Yes. Selby? Yes. Autry? Yes. Hoskins? No. Chester? Yes. Ponchel? Yes. Cook? Yes. Winston? Yes. Bunch? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. And we're on to the variance portion. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, does this one need to be heard again or anything, or can we just make a motion on it? Motion away. Um, so, Andrew or Quinn, whoever wants to, uh, once again, tell me how this is crafted. So it's an... Approval of the five foot variance. And what's the so Quinn had said denial on the fifteen. And a recommendation of denial on the fifteen. No. No. I think we had a, an adjustment there. That's where the change would be. So a recommendation of a nine foot variance. Yes. Sorry. A recommendation <laughs> of a six foot variance. Leaving nine yes. feet. Leaving nine, nine feet. feet. Perfect. Okay. So what I gotta figure out is Hang on, because I've got to switch to the variance so I can read it real quickly. Um, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve VAR 14-49339. Uh, there we go finding in favor of a six-foot variance under item number one of the staff's findings. They recommend a, a denial of a 15. I recommend in favor of a six-foot variance there, leaving nine feet. And then finding in favor of the second five-foot variance listed under item number three, I believe. Second. All right. So we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Chesser. And a second by Commissioner Autry. Mr. Garner. Noble? Yes. Selby? Yes. Autry? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Chesser? Yes. Control? Yes. Cook? Yes. Winston? Yes. Bunch? Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> okay. On to item number nine. Rezone. Rezoning dash 14-4938 uh, submitted by Bates Associates to property located at the northwest located northwest of Frost and Main intersection. The property is an expired RPCD residential plan zoning district and contains approximately 2.54 acres. <coughs> the request is to rezone the property to RMF 24 residential multifamily 24 units per acre. Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <coughs> property. Is uh, located on the south side of uh, Markham Hill, and is part of a, a, a RPZD that uh, has expired. Currently, has no no effective zoning on it at all. Uh, <clears throat> the applicant is seeking to uh, rezone this to RMF 24, which is the zoning that was uh, on the property previous to the rezoning to RPZD. So it is the historic uh, zoning that was on the property. Staff finds that uh, 
<coughs> the R RMF uh, 24 is, uh, is compatible with surrounding land use. Um, there's uh, multiple uh, multifamily projects nearby, a uh, mix of single family and duplex, duplex development. Uh, we, we do feel like um, the zoning is appropriate. <coughs> and uh, uh, we do feel that it's generally compatible with the, with the area as well. Um, everything uh, to the north is RSF4, that is undeveloped hillside, and I uh, would expect that to remain. So uh, everything to the southeast, west is uh, RMF24 for quite some way. So we do feel like uh, that, is, um, that is compatible also. So with that, we are recommending in favor of approval we're recommending approval, rather, of uh, 1449.83 to rezone this to uh, RMF 24. Okay. Thank you. Is the applicant present, please? Is the applicant present, please? Seeing as we have no applicant. Oh. Uh, sorry. Ah. You again? Yeah, me again. <laughs> All right. Okay. <coughs> Give us your name and whatever you want to add. Uh, Andrew Henson with RPH Real Estate. Um, just like to get this uh, property. I know it was they had a development there done before, and now it's a PZD. Uh, we'd just like to ask that this area be rezoned for RMF 24 for our future development. Thank you, sir. A member of the audience like to speak to this item. If you will, step up and give us your name and. We'll keep your comments as brief as you can. Uh, my name is Tom Brown, and I live at 2031 West Main Street. I live to the west of this rezoning on the south side of Main Street. You can see my white roof, my metal roof, there on the... Um, as you see, on my block, they're all single-family homes. And across the street to the north are three duplexes. Then on the corner of Cross and Main to the north and to the south are two old Sears kit houses that were erected back in the 50s sometime. As you notice, the road is not a straight road. One of the things I wanted to take it, the opportunity to present you with now, since we're considering the development of this area, is because of the ongoing development that's occurring now, there's been a lot of surveying. And when the surveyors come by, I always talk to them about what they're surveying and where the corners are. It turns out that the corners on my property and the property immediately to the west are 15 to 20 feet onto the surface of the pavement of Main Street. And if I understand what the surveyors have told me and what the maps say, the street of Main Street should be north of where it is presently located by 15 to 20 feet on this west end. Last year I served a notice of trespass to the city attorney and I received a response from him and I'm still working through the process of addressing errors and omissions and stuff. So. This isn't the first time uh, Mr. Williams has, has heard about this. Um, I am very concerned that this zoning, although it is true apparently at some time in the past that that whole area was turned to 24 units per acre, that that zoning is incompatible with the geography of this land. And I would object to that part of this area being rezoned to 24 units because it is simply incompatible with that land as it sits. 
appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. If you have any questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else in the public like to speak to this item? Seeing them, we'll bring it back to the commission. Okay. Commissioners. Yeah, I'm gonna make some comments now. Um, <coughs> staff. I'll hold off. I, I just had a, I had a question, okay. uh, quick question. Yeah, I'm looking through this. So, so when exactly was this? When exactly would this have been zoned? Uh, 24 units per acre. Is that? Um, how far back was that? You know, I, I think uh, okay. uh, quite some time ago. I'm not exactly sure when that would have happened. Maybe Andrew could tell you, but it would be it would have been a blanket zoning that would have happened over a large area. In the 60s or I think 70s? probably the 70s. 70s, uh, likely. Is when they when they did that, and they zoned some of my land that didn't have access to roads. RMF 24-2, we <laughs> removed that. That's why they did it. <laughs> didn't have any access. <laughs> okay, is that it? Yeah, that's, that's kind of. I'm just wondering how how old that zoning was because it seems it, it seems kind of unusual that it would have been that, and then <coughs> made a PCD. PCD excuse me. Um, let's see, Mr. Thompson, best I can tell by looking at our handy dandy iPads here, um, it looks like everything around this property is either A, vacant hillside, or B, single family homes. I don't see, other than over closer to Ramey there, I don't really see multifamily, or am I just not seeing this right? Well, if you would uh, look at your at your uh, current land use map, I think, towards the back, you'll see that it is, uh, you know, you do have to kind of zoom out just a little bit, but it is uh, sig significantly mixed around. You're correct, mm -hmm. and Mr. Brown is correct, that on Main Street, it is uh, essentially a single-family home uh, with some duplex development. There's a lot of duplex development also happening uh, nearby. Okay. I'm surprised that more folks from Markham Hill, if they aren't in here tonight. Um, okay. Uh, just my thoughts. Um, I'm having a tough time getting my hand around RMF 24 zoning up there. Uh, high density housing, cottage housing, whatever, fine, not a problem. Uh, but as far as 24 units per acre multifamily, I'm not convinced. But, Mr. Cook. I can't believe I agree with you. <gasps> oh my goodness. <laughs> the world is something, an end. something must be wrong. Uh -oh. <laughs> I agree because um, I remember the last project, the PZD that came through. And when that came through, well, it had density to it, but it was a planned development then, and it was... Right. Um, we knew what you were going to get. We knew what we were going to get, right. And that, I think the density would have been a problem in that location, but the way they were going to do it and the promises they made, we felt more comfortable back then. But um, I'm not comfortable doing a blanket RMF 24 for that. There is some of that in that neighborhood, and... My concern is um, this pocket right here is there's a lot of single family. Well, it looks like single family. Not all are, obviously, but it looks like single family. Um, and I don't want this part of town to develop like the areas north of <coughs> the university did, where we had a s small single family houses that have now all disappeared and turned into giant multifamily complexes. So. Mm -hmm. um, well, I certainly support density and multifamily development. I think there are parts of town where we want to try to maintain single family. So I'm not, I'm not supportive of the RMF 24 in this spot. I will say uh, whether or not you, as a planning commission, support uh, RMF 24, you need to make some recommendation for a rezoning to the city council because we cannot leave it as an expired PCD where nothing can be built on it. We need to have some sort of zoning placed upon it, whatever you believe is in the best interest of the city. RMF-8 would be my recommendation. RSF-8. RSF-8, sorry, yeah, I mean. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chester. Um, I'm from the other, I grew up on the other side of Markham Hill from this. Um, I was pretty surprised when it came through as RMF 24 also. Um, I'm a little bit torn because the fact of the matter is even though the development pattern near it is not 
is single family, it is in fact zoned RMF 24. So to some degree I lean towards, well, I understand that if you look across the street, I think, uh, Quinn, I'm correct in saying that all of this is RMF 24, right? Yes, sir. Everything around it. It does occupy the buffer in between. So I don't think that RMF 24 is appropriate on this site, first of all. However, I can be willing to bet that the applicant wouldn't like us to just rezone it tonight. I would actually prefer. We don't rezone. We just make a recommendation. Well, make a recommendation. I'd, you'd rather I rec make a recommendation than table and allow staff to talk to the applicant? Uh, there'll be plenty of time to talk with the applicant even on the way to city council. Uh, you know, if you all make a recommendation and, and they don't like that recommendation, then they certainly can appeal and request a different rezoning and the city council makes a final decision. It's your job as a planning commission simply to use your best judgment and make your recommendation to the city council what you think they ought to do. They'll listen to you, they'll listen to the staff, they'll listen to the applicant, and then they'll make the final decision. Okay, well, here's where I'm at on this. We, I am, it has no legal zoning currently, so that's one factor. Uh, so, so that actually changes my opinion a little bit, but it makes me uncomfortable when we, if we were to, let's say, the applicant asked for one zoning and we actually go the other direction and down zone it, I think that's a mistake. There's, there is no zoning on it now. I, I get that there's not, but we have done that in the past. So, I gotta say, I'm torn. I see the argument given the, if you just look at the land use map, it totally, I would say, yeah, I can see how that would be RMF 24. If you look at the topography over there, I can't help but agree that it probably should not be RMF 24 in that spot. So, I'm just gonna leave it at torn for now. Uh, I was gonna argue for more time, but the city attorney would prefer to make a recommendation of some sort tonight, given yes, that it I'm has no zoning. I'm un uncomfortable leaving land I get it. In, in a vague thing where the landowner can't do anything with it. But I'm talking about a, a two-week leaving if the applicant agrees in this case. Um, and given that, Mr. Chair, if it is possible, since I can see the applicant almost physically chomping at the bit. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm just <laughs> waiting. Any questions? I'm just listening. Hmm. Oh. Well, I was going to say I would love to hear what he would think of RSF-8. I bet I can tell you. I bet he'd say no. Uh, can I ask him? Or can you ask him for me? You've got the floor, sir. I'm assuming RSF-8 is not what you would prefer. We would prefer the zoning that we apply You asked for, obviously. I get that. Yes, sir. Okay, and I understand that. So I'm going to... I'm going to... Obviously, I'm, I'm willing to look at all options to try to get this, you know, I want to work with you guys. I'm not here just saying it's got to be this way or, or, or no way, but obviously, you know, we have some ideas and, and RMF 24 it suits, suits our ideas of what we'd try and, and like to be able to do with that property. I understand that. What I, I guess what I would like to, I, su I suspect that there are some Zoning options other than RSF-8, like form-based options, which might be, I don't know. I guess I feel like if you wanted to table it in order to discuss with staff other options, if it looks like, and I think it kind of looks like RMF-24 is not going to be recommended, you can either go wrangle with the council on that or come back and possibly get a recommendation from us for approval of something else. And so... While I understand that the city attorney doesn't want to leave things with no development rights, what I'm saying to you as the owner right now well, is, I'll, would you rather table for two weeks more of no development rights? I will say staff? this: um, it's it's the property. I don't technically own it yet. It's under contract. Sure, and that's fine. One of the uh, conditions was obviously to sure. get this property rezoned, both sure. for the current owner and obviously for me to, to execute the contract. Okay. So, so you, do you not want to see it tabled, or would you rather discuss it? Um, if you, obviously, the feeling I'm getting from you guys is it's RMF 24 is going to get a big no, um, is, what, is what my feeling is. And so if there's other options, obviously, um, tabling it for two weeks might, might be the best for then I can go to potentially the uh, city planning staff there, talk about my potential ideas of what I would like to see happen with that area, and then I can make my decision um, based on that, obviously, I'd have to get back with the current owners because uh, I was supposed to let them know, obviously, what you guys decided today and make sure that they're okay with 
postponing a potential uh, deal on this property for a couple more weeks. So, Mr. Chair, I, or I guess for the city attorney, I'm wondering if is the two weeks tabling make you still uncomfortable even given what the applicant has said? If the applicant desires a two week tabling, then I don't have any problems with it. Uh, I'm basically just in the position that any time a PZD expires, we need to very rapidly rezone it so we can replace the right to develop the land back right. on the land. I understand that, but given the applicant's willingness to go along with it, two weeks isn't you know the end of the world. That's all I was saying. So I'm going to shut up now, but I will stand ready to recommend tabling when everybody else is done talking about it. Can I ask uh, potentially Quinn if you have an opinion sure. on, on this before? I want to second, please. Well, let, sure. and I'll be very brief, and I'll be sure. real no quick. Problem. I remember whenever the uh, cottages came through the first time, and that was or not the first time when the cottages came through the, the PZD that expired. That property obviously was zoned RMF 24 or whatever, so. That project came right onto the property, and and everything happened. Everybody's happy. Um, what you're looking at now, I mean, with with trying to get the rezone in place, uh, the concerns that I have and I had with the cottages also was dental ship. And I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and try to act like I'm going to read your mind, but I'm guessing that you're going to try to provide some type of housing that might possibly appeal to students, which would put a lot of traffic back down dental ship, and that road's a nightmare. So that's my concern, uh, and I, you know, that, that that's not going to make or break the deal. Um, my opinion, uh, you know, if if you if you want to get talked into a tabling, you know, I don't know how the finances work on your side, but in my mind, what the city attorney suggested was that at least if we put some type of zoning on it tonight, it keeps the ball rolling. You, you're not. If you're not dead in the water, you're not stopped, you can make a phone call tomorrow, you can appeal. I mean, there's, there's a lot of options for you without having to technically table because I just, I just want you to realize that if you table on something, I'd prefer you not get hamstrung on something that could get resolved with a few phone calls in the course of the next two weeks as opposed to, you know, pulling your hair, scratching your head over what we're going to do for the next two weeks and then, then two weeks from now, we're right back at the same place we are right now. So. That's, that's the thing is that I think you might be better served just trying to communicate your concerns back through staff and at least keep the ball rolling that in that regard. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to say that uh, you're going to get hammered on any kind of rezoning, but any kind of rezoning that we put, and that's like uh, what uh, the city attorney was suggesting, was that as long as we have some type of zoning on it, that keeps things that keeps things in motion on your side, and I think that's all that's all we're trying to do is just just keep this thing going in your favor, okay. right or wrong as far as what what the zoning is. I mean, you know, it, it, that can get resolved. Things those things can work themselves out down the road. So, thank you, Mr. Marshall. And I'm I'm going to echo something he said a minute ago. Um, <clears throat> you could you could ask for a table tonight. Go work with staff. I think staff said that our MF24 was okay with them. Didn't you? Uh, yes, sir, I did. In okay. fact, it was my recommendation. Okay. And you can yeah. see right now we're not getting that vibe. <laughs> okay. So, so um, I'm not I'm not positive that that tabling it tonight. Uh, in other words, you have this time between now and city council to yeah. visit with staff and change up your request or what have you. Um, I'm a developer. If I was on your side of the table, I wouldn't table it. But okay. that's entirely up to you. If you'd like I, to request, I would prefer, I would, I'd like to request a tabling, then we can consider. I'd prefer that. not to table it. Okay. Thank you. All right. And so, any other commissioners? Yes. Commissioner Winston. Um, when uh, when Markham Hill Cottage Courts came through, uh, I was on the commission on this commission at that time, and uh, um, it was a, a, a really well thought out project. Uh, we had a lot of information to look at. Uh, it had some density. It, uh, it had uh, uh, we knew what street improvements were going to be made. Uh, we knew what was happening with the, the urban forestry, um, and uh, and there's a lot of input from the neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we felt comfortable at the time with what was being proposed. And in, and and, and uh, at this point, we have nothing proposed. Uh, we um, 
and and if we go ahead and do something like an RMF 24, that gives development rights uh, that I think are going to be um, pretty open um, for this uh, for this piece of property, which is fairly delicate in in a, in a in a an established neighborhood that um, has clearly some uh, legal issues pending and that sort of thing. And uh, um, so just I would be more comfortable with something more restrictive than, than RMF 24. So someone make a motion on a zone that you think might be a, the, May I? the best interest of the city, uh, even because that's what you're thinking about. You can listen to staff, you can listen to the applicant, uh, you can look at the 2030 plan, you, you can look at compatibility with the existing structures, not just the underlying zoning, but what's actually there, what's compatible, with what's already there, and then make your decision uh, uh, applying all the rules of zoning considerations that I have supplied to you over the years, many, many different factors, good civic design, fire protection, all that kind of stuff. And also, if you allow me, um, and also, I think what I'd like to see is I'd like for us to vote on the zoning they requested and then go back and if, if that fails for some reason, then discuss what we believe may be an appropriate zoning and vote on that accordingly. I guess you could, you know, normally I like one motion, but I, if you want to have a motion to deny the RMF 24 and then have another motion to recommend something else, that'd be, you know, that's within your really ability to do that. What do you think? Okay. Mr. Chair. Okay, wait a minute. There's a couple. You still got the floor, and then I've got a couple before you. So, uh, considering um, what is actually there on on the ground at this time, considering the conditions of the roads in that area, um, and considering that we don't know what would be proposed in that area, I would be in support of uh, RMF8. RSF8 or R RSF8. Thank you. I thought that's what you said. I can't hear that would, well to me that would be safe and 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 uh, 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 conservative. Uh, if we had more information on what the plans were with it, I could see doing uh, uh, something with a lot more density okay. in that area. Thank you. Now, Mr. Thompson, you had something you wanted to say. Well, it's um, you know this is a this is a difficult item because it is a land use only, and uh, there's a whole lot of background and a lot of discussions that are taking place. <laughs> Uh, the applicant came to me and, and said we'd like to rezone this and this is the product we would like to put on it. Now we can't really discuss that tonight, um, but the, the reason I offered RMF 24 there was first because I thought it would be fairly easy for everyone. Um, I was wrong. Second, yeah. that was because every other zoning that I looked at uh, after the product was described would require a variance. The lots would become immediately non-conforming for the use that they intended. And so uh, RMF 24 was the was the zoning that um, that I thought uh, would make them able to go forward without having a, a non-conforming cre condition created by city council. So uh, and that had to do with lot width. There are a number of narrow lots on Maine, and RMF 24 with the the, the development they had hoped to do there uh, was the best fit in my opinion. Um, I'd be happy to look again at at any others. And I'm not sure about the process of, of zoning, what happens to a lot, an existing lot that is then rezoned, if it's still a buildable lot, you know, I suppose, I don't know if a variance has to happen there or not. It's, it's, it's something that we try to avoid is to, to uh, create non-conforming conditions, and that's what I was doing with this recommendation. But, uh, you know, we can't rely on that product. That was just the one that they, that they brought to me. Now, once it has RMF24 on it, you are correct, the density is... Is, um, is enormous, but there are a whole uh, series of reasons why uh, building multifamily on this uh, would probably be uh, uh, financially uh, challenging. challenging. Not, not the least is all the infrastructure, streets, and everything that would be required with the multifamily development likely, um, whereas with something less, um, there would be none whatsoever. So um, I think the assumption that you obviously have to go on is that they will build that maximum density, but the likelihood is extremely, extremely low, I would say. And so, but if, uh, if they were denied the RMF 24 tonight and we 
made a recommendation that for a different zoning, they could come back through with a PZD, which would be uh, uh, much more informative than a blanket zoning. Um, they don't have to wait or anything like that, correct? No, and they can create their own lot widths and, and setbacks and things like that. Uh, and they don't have to engineer it out because it's not a development approval, it's only a zoning approval. Mm -hmm. They could then come back with a large scale development or whatever or preliminary plat to meet the requirements of their zone and their planned zoning district that they have designed. Mm -hmm. And at that point also when they would show, they could show the public and the city council what their proposal is and that it is not a large apartment complex which in Article 24 of course would allow them to build. Plus, Mr. Thompson, you've seen what their potential request is as far as what they may want to build or what have you, and this panel has not. So no, that's correct, and we can't rely on that. Right. You know, two single-family homes is what I heard. Yeah. So. Really? <laughs> <Just kidding>. Two. <laughs> Three. <Sir. laughs> okay. All right. So uh, this is what we're. This is why. Mr. Austin. Uh, give me one moment, please, sir. Okay. Okay. I thought some bills down here had something. Okay, Commissioner Chester. Uh, well, I was going to. Quinn was chomping at the bit over here, so I was going to try to make sure he had some time on the floor. That, but you already got him, which is good. Um, but I would love to hear from the applicant at this point if it's acceptable to you. Okay. All right. Um, did you have something you wanted to answer? If you will, please keep it brief. It, it will be. Um, my name is Mike Bauman. I just have a quick question. So, this property is not his. And so if we don't table it and you give a recommendation, do we have time to pull it off? Because he doesn't want to put, let's say he decides that because he can't do the development that he wants to, <coughs> it's not economically feasible to build the project, right? But you assign development rights to it and it's not his parcel to have those rights assigned to? Well, the, the city council, uh, as they did in, in 1970 when they rezoned everything. They have, they can rezone through their legislative powers. They doesn't have to have the consent of the property owner. They didn't get my consent when they rezoned my property. Uh, it just, they have that legislative power to do it. This property needs to be zoned something, some way that it can be developed, even if that's not going to be the final way it's going to be developed. Uh, we don't want to have property sitting out there that cannot be developed because a PZD has expired. And, and that makes good sense, but is it the applicant's right when he doesn't own the land or would it be more appropriate for the landholder if he decides not to uh, purchase the land to bring that forward? He, the, the ball's starting to roll and there's momentum okay. on it. So, If, if in fact they uh, did, I think the land needs to be rezoned whether it's the applicant or the, or the owner. Either way, the land needs to be rezoned. Uh, and then of course, the owner or another applicant sometime can come back in and have it rezoned uh, to better meet what they really want. So if it was zoned here by the, or recommended for zoning here by the Planning Commission, rezoned to the, by the city as RF at uh, residential single family, eight units per acre, well, that might not be the zoning that, that either you or the owner wants. And in the future, then the owner or a future developer could come in and ask for another rezoning to, to change that to something that they would uh, be more compatible with. And it could very well be a planned zoning district where basically you can design your own uh, rules on that as long as the city council agrees with you that that is a proper zoning for this land. Uh, that's something that uh, it really is, uh, was used a lot in the past and hasn't been used very much uh, recently that in a difficult situation like this might be the best way to go. I think, I think to sum it up, what the city attorney is saying is, is right now, any zoning that you would get is better than what you have now. The same thing with the property owner, because right now you have no zoning. No zoning. So I think that's what he's basically trying to say. Okay? Thank you. Who else would like to speak on behalf of it? Okay, let's hear a motion on the RMF well, 24. So I don't know if I still have the floor or not, though. Um, I, sure? I still want to know, like, I know there's been some back and forth, but I still feel like I'm hearing from the applicant that they might want a table for two weeks to avoid pushing to RSF 8. Am I wrong? Oh. <laughs> I know it's, I, and I know you, so, 
Tabling for two weeks allows you to discuss with staff. You could it's staff's very supportive of our of RMF 24. We cannot make a decision based on what you want to build there, okay? Because you don't have to build that. You can go build whatever you want. I know that that slows the process down, but it sounded to me from, I don't know if that's your business part or another part of the applicant, a representative of the owner, it sounded like you might not want the momentum going at this point. I'm just saying, I feel like I want to hear from you a direction you want to go. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, if you, it sounds like what Mr. Williams is saying is that y'all want to put a zone on it tonight. I don't. Of something. Is that what sounds like most everybody does? Is that, is that what if, I'm hearing? If you and the owner do not want or are willing to wait for two weeks and don't feel like that's bad for the property interest that you own or that, that, that you have a right to as with your contract, the contract of purchase. Yes. Then you can certainly ask to have it tabled, and, and now you know that it's going to be very difficult to get an approval of RMF 24 here. There are some other options that you can look at, including a planned zoning district and, and maybe one of the uh, form-based districts like neighborhood conservation or something that has very narrow lots, so that there's other things that you possibly could look at, and if you want to do that, you want to get an approval from the planning commission possibly, rather than a zoning that you don't well, I, even contemplate, then you might want to table it for two weeks and see if... Well, I'd be hesitant for to throw a zone on there without obviously the current owners have any type of representation here or uh, being able to have, speak out on, on their behalf, obviously, because I know what my intentions are and what I would like to do. Obviously, that's the reason that I'm asking for RMF 24, but I can't speak for the current owners because that they're not here, obviously, to represent themselves. And it, it sounds like, uh, from what you guys are saying, that most everybody here is, would, would turn down the RMF 24 zone that we're applying for. So if that is the case, then it might be the best to table it for two weeks. Let me talk with staff a little bit more, see if there's another way of, of being able to, to put a potential product on there that I would like to put on there. And could you ask the owner to have a representative here at the next meeting? Yes, I could. Mr. Cook, well, I just want to say anything is that we're not rezoning that. The city council makes that final decision. Right. Yeah. We just make a recommendation. Yeah. So even if we say, RSF8 here, the city council can say whatever they want at that level. If we did not have RF, RMF24, they may accept RMF24. So your fight's at city council. We're just making a recommendation. Well, then let's, if, if what I'm understanding is correct, then I'd be fine with just continuing the process, letting y'all make your recommendation, and then uh, we, we can go from there. Is that, is, now that I understand about, about that part of it. Okay. Sounds like he wants to hear it tonight, right? Yeah. All right. It is Night, two thing. weeks, all the same. Might as well get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He doesn't so take, take my fight either tonight or tomorrow. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I guess if you want that way, I'm going to make a motion to deny RMF 24. Okay. Make a motion to deny the recommendation of RMF 24. There okay. Second. Okay. We have a m on the on the matter of RMF 24. Okay, we have a motion to deny by Commissioner Cook and a second by Commissioner Selby. So, to be clear, if you vote yes, you're voting against RMF 24. But, so I have a question about that. Okay. This is still just a motion to Recom forward with a recommendation for denial. We're not denying RMF 24, right? No, no. The, the, I don't understand that part. Is All we can do is forward. And zoning? Well, at this point, you're not even recommending to Ford. You're just making a recommendation to deny RMF 24, the recommendation to deny RMF 24. Follow up with another. Motion. Okay, I don't understand how we can do that, but okay. Okay, so the motion is to deny RMF 24. If you vote yes, you're voting against RMF 24. Mr. Garner. Noble, no. Shelby? Yes. Rotary? Yes. Hawkins? Yes. Chester? No. Honcho? Yes. Cook? Yes. Winston? Yes. Bunch? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. okay, so they're not you're not going to recommend RMF twenty four. What are you going to recommend? Well we're going to get to that right now, Mr. Kitt. Mr. Cook. I would like to make a recommendation to the city council for 
rezoning 14-4938 uh, to uh, RSF 8. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Cook to forward to the City Council with a recommendation of RSF 8 by Commissioner Cook and a second by Commissioner Autry. Mr. Garner. Noble. No. Selby. Yes. Autry. Yes. Hoskins. Yes. Jesser. No. Hotchell. Yes. Cook. Yes. Winston. Yes. Bunch. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. So our recommendation to City Council is RSF 8. Good luck in your future endeavors with City Council. Thank you, guys. You want, to, you want to talk with the, the planning staff and make sure the owner is also aware of your conversation with planning staff yeah. about what you want to do. This will automatically go to the city council, mm -hmm. but at the city council level, you can make a different recommendation okay. yourself. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Okay. All right. Uh, Subdivision committee meeting. What's the next one, Mr. Garner? Uh, Thursday, and we have. I believe Cook filling in for Chester right. and then Winston and Autry. Yes. Chester, Winston, well, Chester's still no, in. Cook. Winston. Right. Okay. All right. With that, at 656.03, we're adjourned.